Okay, this talk is called um, Ambiguity of Special Relativity Experiments. Um, of special relativity, one of the many issues is that it's supposedly supported by numerous experiments. Well, it isn't. The experiments that supposedly support special relativity are ambiguous. There is a great fanfare by supporters of special relativity that what they believe is supported by experiments, but they admit, or in other words, gloss over, that their supposed experimental support is ambiguous. So taking, for example, uh, this headline from Scientific American, it, it claims experiments at a particle accelerator have confirmed the time dilation effect predicted by special relativity. Um, it says time dilation, I would prefer to call it uh, clock dilation as it's an effect on, effect on clocks and not on time, but I'm going to pass on that issue. So the initial impression that people are given is that special relativity is being supported by experiments again. But what it fails to point out is about empirically equivalent theories, which means that experiments can be interpreted by more than one theory. In the case of special relativity, uh, it's the issue of special relativity versus Lorentz theory. So for the issue of uh, special relativity versus Lorentz theory, both uh, theories use the same mathematics of Lorentz transformations. Uh, there is ambiguity of what special relativity is, but the majority of people seem to believe there is no ether, which can be spelt in two different ways. And the ambiguity of special relativity has been dealt with in other videos of mine. Whereas the Lorentz theory does have an ether. So for sake of this video, treating a special relativity as having no ether, which is a majority point of view, versus Lorentz theory has uh, ether. So back to the headline in Scientific American. Um, it says that physicists have verified a key prediction of Einstein's special theory of relativity with unprecedented accuracy. Experiments at particle accelerators in Germany confirm that time moves slower for a moving clock than for a stationary one. So a minor point being uh, moving, who is moving? Uh, in relativity, you're supposed to be uh, anybody moving at a constant uh, speed or in a certain direction can treat themselves as being stationary. As one critic of relativity points out, a team of scientists might tomorrow announce that they have measured time dilation between a moving and a stationary clock and matched the special relativity prediction to 10 significant digits. If the results were accurate, we'd have to accept them. Yet we should also ask the question why are the clocks labelled moving and stationary and not vice versa, for there are supposedly no absolute velocities in the universe. So when it's talking about, when this uh, article from Scientific American talks about moving, well, who's supposed to be moving? You're supposed to be able to treat uh, different frames of reference as moving and stationary. Uh, let's, however, not get bogged down in that issue. 
So special relativity is tested. Does that mean special relativity better than Lorentz theory? Or do they mean both theories work? So when they say verified key predictions of Albert Einstein's special relativity, do they mean that you are they you also verify the key prediction of Lorentz theory? Now critic relativity points out it is important to note that while Lorentz theory is mathematically indistinguishable from special relativity, uh, which it preceded, and that's the point about the Lorentz transformations as the maths in both theories, the basis is different. Specifically, the former is not strictly speaking a relativity theory at all, as it does not reject the eta as a standard of rest by which velocities, distances and time can be given an absolute meaning. As such, it manages to avoid the logical inconsistencies inherent in an Einsteinian universe, where light waves no longer have a medium to travel in, and time and length not only dilate and contract in as many different ways as one cares to imagine, but also in two completely contradictory ways at the same time. Well, Wikipedia has this to say about Lorentz theory. What is now often called Lorentz ether theory has its roots in Lorentz's theory of electrons, which was the final point in the development of the classical ether theories at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. And it then goes on to say, today, Lorentz ether theory is often treated as some sort of Lorentzian or neo-Lorentzian interpretation of special relativity. So basically, special relativity is treated uh, as you can interpret it in various different ways, and Lorentz with an ether is treating as one way of interpreting it. The introduction of length contraction and time dilation for all phenomena in a preferred frame of reference, which plays the roles of Lorentz in mobile ether, leads to the complete Lorentz transformations. So we have two different theories, a special relativity interpreted by majority as no ether versus Lorentz a theory with an ether or you can interpret it as Lorentz with its ether theory treated as a different interpretation of special relativity, uh, which is normally interpreted as no ether. So the articles uh, like the one in Scientific American don't go into that issue and we just say experiment confirms special relativity. However, in this particular case, the article says, to test the time dilation effect, physicists need to compare two clocks, one that is stationary and one that moves. To do this, the researchers used the experimental storage ring uh, where high speed particles are stored and studied at the GSI Helmholtz Center for Heavy Ion Research in Germany. So it does seem to be treating the stationary clock as the preferred frame, which means it was really Lorentz theory that was being confirmed. However, really such articles claiming experimental support for special relativity are ambiguous. It leads, leads people to, leads reader to decide what, what can be meant by it. Does it mean uh, Lorentz theory is indistinguishable from special relativity, so experiment confirm both theories? Or does it mean experiment proves special relativity over Lorentz? Or does it mean something else? Because those writing about experiments usually want to admit mentioning the ambiguity, ambiguity issue of what is special relativity. So the steps are special relativity is ambiguous. So reporting experiments dealing with special relativity are made ambiguous. The scientific method is supposed to be about testing a theory, but that 
presupposes the theory is properly defined and explained. When the theory is ambiguous, then you're not really testing anything. What you're doing is treading water, which basically means you're maintaining your current position without making any significant progress. You're just staying still. And that's the problem with uh, the issue of special relativity. How is it being interpreted? Is it being interpreted as having a preferred frame? Or is it being interpreted as not having a preferred frame? Or is it being interpreted as you can have a preferred frame? Or at the same time, it's not, not have a preferred frame. It is all just ambiguous. Thank you, and that's the end.